Affinity Photo's Focus Merge functionality allows you to merge several images of the same subject at different focal distances. This is also known as focus stacking and is typically used to maximize depth of field, especially with macro imagery. To get started, I can go to File, New Focus Merge. I'll click Add. Then I'll go into the Toadstool folder here, select all my images, and click Open to add them to the file list. You can stack both out of camera JPEGs and RAW files. If you are using RAW files, however, I would recommend developing them first to a lossless format such as TIFF in order to control the development process, as you may want to recover highlights, alter the black point, and modify other settings beforehand. I'll click OK to begin merging. Affinity Photo will take the set of images through three distinct processes. First, the images are all aligned. Then a depth map is created to guide the merging. And finally, the most detailed areas of each image are merged together. The final result is an image where the subject has front to back sharpness. From here, you can employ standard editing techniques to complete the image edit. Something I might do is non-destructive dodging and burning to really bring out the subject from the background. I'll create a new pixel layer, set its blend mode to overlay and its opacity to 30%. Then I'll select the paintbrush tool and on the brushes panel, I'll switch to the masking category and pick a large soft round brush. As I'm set to a black color by default, I'll paint a round the toadstool to darken these areas. Then I'll use X to switch my color to white and paint into the toadstool to brighten it. If I just move back to the layers panel and hide this pixel layer to reveal the initial result, you will see that this is a quick and effective way of shaping lighting in your image and promoting focus on the main subject. Now I'll perform a new focus merge. And this time, I'm going to add 51 images of this old camera. Affinity Photo will go through the usual focus merging process, but I've chosen this set of images to demonstrate some of the focus merge shortcomings and how to address them. You'll notice that when the focus merge completes, the clone brush tool will automatically be selected and the Sources panel is shown, populated with all the images used to create the final result. This allows us to go in and manually clone areas from specific source images, which we will need to do for this example. Focus merging can struggle with specular highlight areas, especially if they do not contain fine detail. If I select the first image on the Sources panel, then click the eye icon here, this will isolate the chosen image. So I can go through and find an image where this area here is sharp. Here we go. So I will toggle the eye icon again and on my brush settings, just make sure I have hardness set to 0%. Then I'll zoom in, make sure I have an appropriate brush width, then just click drag and clone into this area using the source image. Now looking along the top of the image, I'll find another area over here that needs to be addressed. Toggling through my source images, this image looks like a good candidate for cloning here. So I'll toggle back to the main image again, then just clone into this area here. There are some specular areas over here as well, that I can tidy up. So there is the brass screw here with an intense specular highlight reflection. I'll look through my source images and this one here will suffice. Then there is an area over here. So again, I'll just look through my source images clone from this image, over here, I'll just have a look at the source images again, 
Okay, so I want this image for this area and this image for this area. Then finally, going through my source images again, I can use these two images to tidy up the detail here. I can then switch to the view tool using H, which will prevent me from accidentally brushing over any other areas and will let me click drag to move around and examine my retouching work. I can then use Command-1 on Mac, Control-1 on Windows to view the image at 100% zoom. When focus merging macro imagery, dust and other small details can become quite prominent. To help reduce the amount of manual retouching required, you can go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Noise, Dust and Scratches to non-destructively tidy up some of the smaller areas of dust. I can check Preserve Alpha, then try a small radius of three pixels, which is sufficient to remove some of that unwanted detail. Finally, I will just show you that focus merging can even align and merge a set of handheld telephoto images. Most images destined for focus merging or stacking are shot under more controlled circumstances. But looking quickly at my source images here, I shot these dragonfly images with an effective 600mm focal length using focus bracketing on the camera. The framing of the actual shot moves around quite dramatically in some of these images. Nevertheless, I'll go to File, New Focus Merge, Add My Images, and click OK to merge them. And here I have the final result, where the dragonfly has front to back sharpness and plenty of fine detail. Anyway, that was a look at Affinity Photo's focus merging capabilities. I hope you have found this video useful, and thank you for watching.